Hello again. Um, so by, uh, I guess, popular demand, I uh, promised uh, a few of you to uh, make some kind of on-shape tutorial. I also promised myself that I'm going to uh, do that in return for the awesome support that I got from uh, many of you guys. Um, I mean donations uh, that uh, got me a mosquito. Uh, thanks to that, I will be able to make a, a face for the uh, uh, an Eva face for the uh, mosquito horrend. Um, so yeah, that was awesome, and this is my attempt to uh, fulfill that those promises. Um, so yeah, on shape. Um, this is on shape and I'm going to, I want to show you a few basics um, on how to use it. There may be better ways of using it and I'm, um, I don't have a plan on any tutorial or how to, you know, do it uh, properly, but I'll show you how you understand how things work and maybe that will help you to at least start if there's any, uh, if there are professional ways of doing that, which are different than how I'm doing things, then you'll just need to learn that from someone else. But I'll show you how I'm doing things. And I would like to start with recreating, uh, to practice the sketches. I would like to uh, recreate the uh, micro limit switch plate from open builds. We have all the dimensions over here. So let's get to it. You start with the uh, documents list view uh, in Onshape. I'm using the free subscription, as you can see over here. Let's create a new document. Open builds plate. And it will throw you into a workspace of your document with this view. You have a part studio and an assembly by default. Uh, don't worry about the assembly uh, for now. Uh, let's focus on the part studio. So what I usually do is get rid of two of the planes that are already here and start with a sketch. Let's go with a top view. Oh, let me hide my face so we can see all the whole screen. All right. Over here you have the shapes, uh, some shape modification tools and constraint tools. Uh, we'll go through many of them in a second. So let me start with a center rectangle, like so, and let's check the dimensions. 32 by 15. So 32 by 15. We have our basic plate. So now the four holes and one slotted hole. Um, so the four holes are going to be circles. There's a whole tool, but for now it's easier to use, to just use circles. And the, the, the my dimension is M3 tapped, so let's just do like three millimeters. Another one here and here. And you can see those are blue. Um, when they are blue, it means that they are not fully constrained. So the software doesn't know really where those should be. And if you move one thing, other things may uh, may move, so you always want to uh, go. You always want to constrain everything so that the lines uh, will get black. Uh, so over here, let me. All all of the four holes are equal size, so three uh, millimeters in. Uh, what's the word? Um, Diameter, right? English is hard. I want them to be equal. So here's my equal constraint. And now I'm sure that all three of them are equal. If I resize one of them, all of them will get resized. Okay, so now where they are in the sketch. Uh, 10 millimeters apart and 10 apart. So over here and 
10 over here. And those are not centered right now, but since they are 10 millimeters apart, you can do this to make it easy. And then between those two, there will always all also be five. So now they are constrained against each other and will move along. Do we have the dimension that will tell us where those are? No, we don't. We have it over here. Okay. Uh, so it's one millimeter from the top to the face of this hole. So we can do this. One. And they turn black. So now if I grab them, they won't go anywhere. All right, now for the slot. So it's this drawing. If you were to put all of the dimensions over here, you would over constrain the drawing. I'll show you that in a moment, but we can start with the slot size. So it's five and a half and the radius of this, um, what would be the circle is 275. So you can make that circle. You can see sometimes you can uh, you'll have the yellow lines over here that would that is like a automatic constraint so you can see that if i start with this dot over here with the origin of the document of the part studio it will if i go right or on the sides or top to bottom i will have different constraints if i go on the center it will be an inter a coincident um, constraint over here I just want to be sure that it's in the middle and since the origin is in the middle because I started the rectangle from the origin I can just go and make my line that will be the slot so five and a half done now I can use the slot tool over here done and the size was this is the diameter so 275 times because you can do expressions over here 2 for the diameter and I have five and a half done and this is not yet constrained as you can see because I could do I could move it because it doesn't know where it is it knows that it has to be constrained uh, like vertically but it uh, doesn't know where it is vertically but we can learn that from from over here so 3.02 to the from the bottom of the plate to the bottom of the slot so dimensions or d for shortcut three o two okay now everything is constrained now let me show you what will happen if i over constrain it so if we they specify over here that it's 11. So let's do from here to here, 11. Oh, I can't do that with dimensions. Okay, but that's an, it's another example. Uh, 11 over here, it's gray, not black as over here. So this dimension is not constraining. So it's it's informing you that, okay, it's 11, because but not because you told me so, but it's 11 because that's how it is because of all the other constraints that you did so let's try to do something let's try to say that those the circle and this line are tangent and that will fail so now the whole sketch is broken because it's impossible to it's impossible to sustain all the constraints so if i remove some of them it will it will get fixed, but maybe not in the way that we want. We don't want this to be tangent, those two that I just added, so I can remove that constraint by selecting it and hitting delete. And now we're back to normal. Okay, so this is the sketch. So this is really what, what we do when we, uh, when we design those parts. You make the sketch in two dimensions, right? x and y in this case x and y over here you can see it on the cube and then we need to extrude it into uh, z 
So the document specifies uh, three millimeters thick. So I want to extrude three millimeters. And we have our plate. We want it to be visually appealing because you need to like the work that you're working on to finish it. And we have our plate. Now we could export it to STL, for example, and try to print it or export it to anything else to put it on a CNC and make that plate. Which I never did, so I'm not sure what I'm talking about. So this is it. Uh, now to uh, show you some extrude options, let's try and modify this plate. So let's say that we want to reuse what we already have so let's use this face over here it's copied let's use this uh, part of the slot and bring some lines to the sides like so <clears throat> and now since it's a closed shape it's constrained everywhere because i dragged from from a, a point to another point on the sketch, so it's constrained with the, for example, over here, uh, the yellow line is constrained with the uh, orange line over here, and I can extrude again. And the extrude options, you need to uh, make sure you're on solid, and then by default, if it's touching another part, it will uh, give you an add function. So this will be one part right now. Or you can remove to get rid of a section of the part, like so. Or you can add a new part. So in this case, those two would be different parts. Let's get rid of that. And let me also point you to, the, to this construction line. So when you extrude stuff, those construction lines are not being not are not taken into consideration. So you um, you just have them over here to use them to specify other dimensions. For example, like we did with the slot over here. So I just needed that line for the slot to know which direction to be made, and that's it. And if I extrude, the line is not used for anything. It's useful if you want to make yourself a sketch, for example, you want to see where that limit switch is going to be, and I would like to make uh, myself a rectangle from the center and would and see where it would be on a 2020 profile. How much space I have over here, for example, for my plastic part or, or something like that. And the, those those dashed dash, dot da, dot dashed lines are going to be uh, are not going to be taken into consideration for anything over here. So that's the basis of the basics, and let's go to the assembly for a moment and you don't edit stuff over here you just glue and fasten parts together so if you go to the insert tab we have our part over here and we would like to put a uh, put an actual limit switch on it and maybe a few screws so because it's on shape you have a lot of parts already made over here so we can go to other documents and then um, find other parts that you may need so for example i can go and look up for look for open builds which is a document that open builds provided I just copied it and uh, put it into my workspace so that 
so that um, you know I can edit it if I need it to change colors and stuff like that and we will find over here a limit switch where was it micro limit switch okay done it is inserted now let's go and let's look for the document I made which you may find handy so mark Abra vitamins let it load and we will need a hex screw that's 10 millimeters long m5 generate Um, let's say a v-slot nut, M5-2020, one of them, and maybe a few, a few screws that are going to be M3, and 10 long, 8 long, let's try 8, generate, 1 and 2, done. So now we want to fasten or maybe not fasten because we have a slot over here so let's make a let's make a slot mate from here to here reorient it like so we can limit it but I won't bother you with that right now Okay, next fasten. We want the uh, T nut to be over here or V nut, really. Okay, another one the limit switch will go from here to here. Reorient. Okay, done. And the two screws. We'll go over here. And those are too short. So let me grab them again. Change configuration. 10. We can hide all the mate connectors. And we have an assembled micro limit switch from open builds okay so now that we have that we can go over to easy mod for example uh, let me get rid of this so i can show you how you can put the thing over here um, insert other documents, easy mod, easy mod, and over at assemblies you have the specific parts over here, but on the assemblies you can take the X gantry, like so, and then we can go back to our open builds plate. here you need to create a version of what you did so we need to commit the changes for those who are used to working with version control management it's going to be obvious for others just create a version for now assembly over here and we can put our little test assembly on the oh and I I did the pin slot wrongly but yeah whatever for now so we want to put we want to fasten by some point for example this point 
to the profile. The, the mate point over here is hidden, so we can hold shift to go over there. Move it back a little bit, minus 10 over here. And the screw is, should be over here. I should have just take the mate feature, the pin slot and rotate it by a little bit by 90 degrees so then the pin slot would be in the actual proper direction. And okay, and now we have a pretty bad end stop assembly over here because it will eat up a lot of X space when you would when you were to put an Eva over here. Let me fix the beam over here so it doesn't move when I move the carriage. But yeah, that's that's what we made today. And with that, you could go and measure your uh, measure the distance that's over here. So center distance is 31 for the uh, easy mod and stop holders over here. 31. You could go and make a document that would have two circles. Those are 30, those are three millimeters. So in P PETG, you want three dot three for it to print nicely. 31. To center things, I like to give myself a construction line and then put the middle Tell it that the origin is in the middle point over here, and now everything is constrained. And now we would do a center point rectangle of, I don't know, 32 by 10, extrude, yeah, whatever really, and put two holes over here. I noticed that I'm 22 minutes into the video, so I'm hasting right now. Free, free, and free, free equal. And if we were to extrude that, sh Shift E, we would get some holes to put some kind of end stop over here. And now we could put that ugly blue block on the easy mode with the insert tool. And I'll show you one more thing that may help you doing those things. Fasten your object, rotate. And now that you have your part over here, you can see that it will not work, for example, because it's intersecting over here. So you may want to do right click edit in context. And now you have the context of the assembly while making your part. So we can do weird stuff like with this sketch on the side over here, you could tell it to use a part of the context over here. And now when I'll extrude that, it will get rid of this part as well. This will, this will help you. You'll probably learn to not to use the context soon enough uh, because um, those in context references may may break when you make changes so it's, it's sometimes hard to keep up but for if you're a beginner it will most likely help so yeah i hope i um, this is enough to get many people started if not let me know preferably on discord i'll make it I don't know, design channel or something like that um, in a moment over there. And if, yeah, if you have issues with uh, on shape and uh, you think that I may be helpful, then ask, please. And yeah, and let me know what you want to see um, because I can make, um, I was thinking that it may be a free part kind of thing. 
the third part would be making the, the mosquito face, but uh, yeah, if I'm missing anything, just let me know and I'll try to address that. For now, thank you very much and uh, see you later. Bye.